You know, where I have the head surface build is it leaves a sharp edge and you don't want that. You, you want it because anywhere there's detonation can occur, it does it on a sharp point. So after all the intense polishing and all the work I did to the chambers, it's, seven, it's 71 cc's, uh, is to go back and make sure there's no sharp edges where it was milled. And this is done real easy. I use a uh, 120 grit sand roll and I lay back at about a 30 degree angle, sl slow cutter speed, medium, and just go right around the edges. Okay, that, I gotta touch that side, but I'll block the camera. You I'm trying to watch out for that, but. I do that, and that way there's no edges left on it anywhere, and you should be able to take your hand and go whoop like that and feel nothing but softness, no rough edges. I will note, when I get back from washing and cleaning, there's some areas I want you to see prep work. I'm trying to dig up the tape on it. I got it somewhere where it showed the beginning prep work. All right. That's it. Uh, this is a rocker stud. Notice it don't have the wrench head. This is an old trick for you doing an economical set of screw-in studs. It is a little more trouble for me, but it helps people who can't afford the $140, $150 to do a real set of screw studs. This does a pretty good job. What I'm doing right now, excuse me, is I'm trimming, make sure I got my camera right, I'm ready to trim the stud because the stud is about a hundred thousandths too long. having to move it let me get you another view okay and then after I grind it flat I gotta go along the edges. okay that knocks the sharpness and puts a little radius in it let's go over to the head hey okay, and then Usually when you bevel the edges, you're able to start it in pretty easy. I'll get it in, and what you got... Wow. Now, as you can see, she's pretty flush with the lip. Hold on a minute. As you can see in the picture, look how this beveled edge lays down in there to the chamfer that's put inside the boss where the old uh, pressing stud used to be. Now look over here on this side. You can just really see how many threads up that that is the chamfer or the bevels way up here. Now look how far that's lowered. Reason for this is you run, literally run out of room. When the head shop cuts the threads in there, it will touch the bottom. And you can't, there's no more to go. So what you have to do, um, Pioneer made the studs long enough so for each application you could trim to fit and that's what you just saw me doing. Uh, I trimmed a little over a hundred thousandths off which is about two or three threads, three tops to get it where this lays flush into the bevel. Now let's take a look at the bevel I'm referring to. After it was threaded I took a countersink and hit the top with a countersink to leave a bevel so that this area right here is, um, this is like a, a little uh, shelf 
if you will, that's got a bevel in it, and it'll anchor in so the pressure is applying where the radius area is, not just on a flat surface. Because the danger of using this kind of stud right here, it cracks straight down and busts this whole top ledge off. Now, the amount of torque that I use on this um, is a little different from what some of them say. I've had a lot of experience. I use Loctite Red or Loctite Green. I like green. I'm out of it right now, but, but Loctite Red is pretty awesome. I use that and an inch pound torque wrench and I pull it down to 26 pounds of torque. Now, the regular torque, if you have a wrench head that has this base to torque to, is around 60 pounds. I can tell you for a fact, you start climbing much over 26 to uh, much over 30 pounds, and there's a big chance you're going to bust this, and when it busts, if it can't be machined down, the head is junk. So, keep in mind about 25, 26 pounds of torque on a non-wrench head style. Here's the difference. These studs cost a dollar and a half. The machining process, since you're not milling the pads, you're not cutting it, and you're relying on the factory guides, uh, usually about $60 is what they charge to machine these bosses. So for the heads and all, what you're talking about is $70, 75 bucks maybe, to put screw-in studs in the head, not ever have them pull out, that includes the studs, and then you're good to go. You just rely off the factory integral guide in the head, or in this case, the rocker arm is self-aligning. I just wanted to show you that deal real quick, an economical way to put screw-in studs in the head. Okay, um, when I put my Loctite in, I always take and I kind of swab it in, I take a little flat head, and I'll kind of go around, you know, I'm not worried about using this. A lot of people are scared to death. It's so expensive, but better safe than sorry. And I'll take my little screwdriver and kind of swab it in. Make sure I got plenty on the threads. Okay, and then I'll take and just put a touch on the very end of the threads right here on the stud. Okay, and then reel her on down. And I got my inch pound torque wrench, like I said, to the equivalent of uh, 26 pounds. But boy, you gotta be careful. Whoa, it's kind of scary, Harry, but. That's about what I've come up with over the years. You start pushing it much more than that. I've never went over 30 because you do it. It'll just snap it right off. All right, and that is a double nut. Damn nut that I'm using. They're kind of a pain to get off, but economical screw-in studs. Okay. <clears throat> As I mentioned, on all stage four... <clears throat> sorry about that, fellas. On all stage four heads... After porting, I go in there and pressure test them. Uh, right now, I usually do it at double the radiator cap, which is about 40 pounds. And here we are, and this is dishwasher fluid. And all I do is, boy, if there's any kind of air leak whatsoever, it just throws bubbles and all kinds of stuff up. I do that in the combustion chambers and the exhaust ports. Let me back up here and give you a little bit better shot overall. Okay. And I just pretty much zipped through it because believe me, with 40 pounds of pressure, if there's anything at all, it's going to blow up. You know, kind of like when you played bubbles when you're a kid with a little bubble wand. It just goes right through it. And, you know, you can usually tell when you're going to bust through on the cylinder head. Here, I thought I'd show you the pressure. I thought I'd get that in there. Almost 40 pounds. You can see how I spray. I go in there and do it. And you can just tell there's there's nothing coming out because like I said, it'll blow right up. I'll go ahead and let the release out so you can see it was pumped full of air.
Okay. I'll go ahead now and do the other head and then we're down to the last thing, putting them together and setting the spring heights. So on these type of screw-in studs, I also go in there and shoot on the studs because it's non-wrench head. I just go in there, lightly touch it, and like I said, anything goes on, you can just see it pop out. It's just a double procedure. I mean, I did put the red Loctite on it. I let it sit. I let it cure up. But it don't hurt to go ahead and hit the tops. And then I go in here from this way and take a look at the intake ports and then the exhaust ports. Then you have to wipe it off very quick because it'll rust. And I shoot WD-40 and carburetor cleaner, get all the bluing off, try to make it look real pretty. So... When my guy gets his head, he knows he's precision. Heat baked epoxy coating on the top. Two or three layers of cast blast gray on the outer head. Polished. Uh, you've seen all the detail work I've done in the oil galleys. More on that later. Alright, I've already... This one head I cleaned up exceptionally well. And although it looks almost perfect, it's got just a little bit of bare metal. That's worth cleaning and spraying. Now the epoxy coating on the top never came off, but I'm just gonna go over here, hit it with the class, uh, cast blast gray, and do my little bit of touch-ups on it and get back.